Hey guys, it's Mike the Wrestler Godsmith. Um, you guys are watching on wrestling, the premier YouTube that focuses on Raw, SmackDown, NXT, AEW, and many more. So, um, I just got through watching Raw. I know you guys did. I just want to get right into it. Um, the first half of Raw we had, we basically had a match between Keith Lee and 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 Andrade Cien Almas. Andrade basically had a lot of. It was really good. The first half, Andrade had a hit. Keith Lee with an enziguri, doing a missile drop kick, basically slapping him in the face. Um, a lot of, a lot of um, a lot of chest slaps, like a lot of double chest slaps, a lot of raking the eyes, a lot of um, breaking the count because they did a lot of outside stuff. There was like a lot of um, knee to the like knee to the solar plexus, knee to the gut, knee um, doing chop blocks to Lee's knees, um, doing some mission moves, doing um, running Lee's uh leg into the pole. So pretty much what happened was after that the second half of the match goes on, and we got Andrade on Lee does the you know his shoulder tackle, and then does his um he does his um clothesline, does a clothesline tries to do the Big Bang catastrophe gets out of the Big Bang um Andrade gets out of the Big Bang catastrophe, throws Keith Lee into the um into the into the rope, throws him into the rope, does his slaps does his double knee um. His double knee signature tries to do a hammerlock DDT. Then Lee basically grabs him by the arm, pulls by his arm, and then hits him with the spirit hits him with the spirit bomb for the one, two, three. Um, basically it was really the match was really good. Like I said, I love that Keith Lee is getting a lot more TV time. I love that they're doing something with him. I'm just like, I really want them to give Keith Lee a title shot at some point. And I'm really thinking that I really think that Brandy's gonna get it at Hell in a Cell. I just I got a gut feeling he is gonna get one, because we got that. And then we had a promo between Drew McIntyre, um, talking about Night of Champions, how he won and how he thanked everybody. Like Big Show was there, how Big Show Christian and Shawn Michaels were there, and Rick was there. And he basically said, Shawn Michaels, like if you're upset, Drew, we understand. We won't. We didn't mean to do it. We just came together as legends, as friends, as brothers, as we do. To help to even the odds a little bit. He's like, no, I like it. He's like, I like it. And I was like, no, I'm not mad. I like it. I would like it more if everybody beat him up on the street, which is really good. Then Randy does a promo and says, hey, Drew, you, he's like, you went, you think we went through hell? You have no idea. You, you have no idea what hell is. And he basically leaves, takes off, he leaves. Then they continue the night, and then he stops talking. And then he does the um, he does the um, the World Heavyweight Champion Open, uh, the World Heavyweight Championship Open Challenge. And we go back, and then we basically get the match. Like I said, then we get a then we get a match between Oscar and Zelina Vega. Oscar basically tries to Oscar still injury. I think she uh, still sprained her right arm, still sprained. So she basically couldn't do a lot of her moves with her right arm, but she did a lot of moves with the left arm. She did her um her hip attack, does it to Zelina Vega. Zelina Vega does double knees, tries to do the moonsault, gets the knees up. Oscar gets the knees up, slaps her in the face. They start fighting. They start brawling again. Goes to the outside. Oscar hits her with the knee outside near the steps. Basically goes outside. Zelina does the same thing, but basically does a um does a super does a su a suplex on tries to do the submission to her right arm. Basically does like a uh, um a widow's I would say like a it's not a widow it's um the widow's bite like a modified widow's bite to Oscar. Oscar does a suplex on Selena Baker. She tries to pin. She gets it too. She tries to capitalize again. So what happens is that um, basically Zelina does the moonsault again for the final time. tries to do a, tries to do a roll up pin, tries to do a sunset flip pin. Oscar counters it, does a pin to her own, gets a two count. Basically, does the does the moonsault, catches her with the moonsault, reverses it into the Oscar up. Zelina Vega taps. I mean that match was good. Like I said, that match was fantastic, guys. It wasn't bad as I would think it would be. I just think that Zelina's not ready to be champion. And it's really kind of sad because I really don't think Rod knows what to do. I mean, the draft is coming up literally like next week anyway on, on Friday. It's just like I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, I'm going to do predictions about that, guys. But I'm not really being too hopeful this year like I was last year because a lot of stuff that we think is going to happen doesn't happen. And then we basically, then we get, then we go back. We got the legends playing on um, poker. Like you got Shawn Michaels 
and Ric Flair and Christian playing against Ric Flair. They're playing poker. Ric Flair is cleaning them because that was a great segment. I did like the Street Profits. They came in. They were talking with the legs like, we are not worthy, but we. But I know you guys are thirsty. And then then we had a promo. Then we had a, a promo between, I think we had a promo in King's Corp with the Mysterio family, Seth Rollins. It was kind of messed up because he was really talking about Murphy and how Mur Aaliyah's Murphy's daughter. And I'm like, you know... That segment was a little dry. I kind of get tired of hearing about it because it's not really the greatest segment to me. I kind of think it's kind of lame. It really doesn't solve a lot of things. It just it causes more problems, and I, I'm hoping they'll do something with him, but they won't. And I'm glad they're doing something with him and Dominic, but it was like the match was stupid because the thing was that then we had a match between Murphy and... And we had a match between Murphy and Dominic. It was a really good match. It was a really furious match. Because I've seen, like, the ferocity from Dominic. And it was really good. It's just that Dominic wanted to get, like, basically try to just beat up on him. I, they really think, I think they should have made a D, uh, non-DQ. So he could have used the kendo stick. And then Aaliyah comes out and says, Dom, put the stick down. Put the stick down. And basically says, don't hit him. Don't hit him. He's like, he's like no, no, no. He's like, get out of here. Get out of here. And then... Off of the distraction, Murphy rolls up Dom, gets a three-pound, gets the win. And the thing that, that really kind of irks me a bit was the fact that he she slapped him, but he's doing the right thing, and I understand how he feels because it's like, Seth, he's like, do you understand what, what Seth has done to our family? Do you, do you understand what he's done to Dad? Do you understand do you see what he's done to Mom? And she's like, you, Dad is right. You are naive. Like I said, I don't hate it, but and then we get a and then we get a promo thing with Natalia and Lana, which was really dry. It was really kind of I think it I think her the promo segment was really flat. They were talking about Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler who are injured, and they were saying that we want the tag the women's tag team title belts now. They should forfeit them. Then the guy um I forgot his name uh. It's not John. It's not John Cone because I know who John Cone is. Uh, it was John something or other, the um, WWE official, which I think he might be the, the Raw General Manager. I'm just going to say the Raw General Manager comes out, says to them, we are not, I'm not going to just, we can't just strip them of the title, but I am going to give you guys a, a match so you guys can earn a number one contendership for the titles. And then Mandy Rose comes out and Dana Brooke comes out, which I was happy. Um, They did fantastic. So they had a match. So they're like Mandy Rose is basically giving her, giving Natalia kicks to the gut. And Lana kicks the gut. Then pretty much what happens is with Mandy Rose, she does a um, Mandy Rose does a suplex, gets basically does a suplex, does a rose plant, and basically gets the win. They win. They stand tall. Which, like I said, I'm glad they're doing. And then we get a uh, a Bianca Belair uh, video package again about her being the be the ASD of the degree, like doing track and field against these like runners. I think they're performance center guys, and she beat them all. It was it was really good. I like it. Um. The other thing that kind of really kind of I think was good was the her business getting into it with um with Andra well, not Andrade uh with uh Mustafa Ali he was going into lock I think he was going in to talk to Cedric or see if Cedric was there because I didn't see him and then we get a like we basically they go in they're basically going against them they basically say we'll handle our business right now we'll we'll do it in the ring and then so they do a six man tag match. They basically get into it. Six man tag comes out. First six man tag doesn't really start. Um, Apollo and Ricochet go after. Apollo goes after Lash. Lashley goes after MVP. And then uh, Mustafa goes after Shelton. So they do like suicide dives outside the ring. They start fighting. Uh, Bobby, Bobby Lashley runs um, runs uh Apollo's back into the, the barricade so they start slamming each other back and forth. The match hasn't started yet. Then we as soon as the match starts, um we see the power go out seeing the retribution um Titan the retribution uh entrance but we don't see them yet. It was a good match, good back and forth. Uh basically as like basically this the first half of the match Ap Apollo Cruz and Ricochet are doing like basically kicks and isolating MVP MVP is the legal man, so they then um Shelton Benjamin and Bobby Lashley pull out Apollo Cruz and Ricochet and beat them out on the outside. So it just leaves, so it just leaves Mustafa Ali and MVP. MVP ducks the Enziguri, ducks it the first time, catches the leg, ducks it, basically does a four fifty splash, gets the pin, and they win. So they stand tall, which was a really good match. 
Because I'm thinking that's good for them, and I like the herb business because they're actually doing something. I just don't like the fact that they keep talking about retribution, and we haven't really seen high, high tales of them yet. And I'm thinking the retribution plan is actually becoming scrapped now, because that was like the second, maybe the third. We might see them on SmackDown on Friday. I don't really know. And then we and then we come to so they basically then we come to a um, and then we come to a uh, Drew McIntyre coming out for his um, the open the WWE Championship Open Challenge. He comes out and says, "Does anybody want to challenge?" Hello, hello, hello. He says, "I guess I'll just stand here and talk for ten minutes." And says to the he's like, "How you guys doing? How you, he's like, "How you guys doing, Charles? Uh, how you guys doing, Charles? How you guys doing? Commentary? You guys having a good day? Good day? Whatever." Then we. Dobbs Ziggler music hits. He says, "Um, I thought I, I thought I'd said this challenge was for anybody I, who I haven't challenged yet." And he is like, "Um, it's not me, but I do have something for you." Then we, then the lights go out. Then we hear, um, the orchestra music. Bobby Roode comes back. He gets off strong. He he starts going after um, Drew's leg. He basically goes after him. Does chop blocks. Does does figure four to try to submit him. Um, he reverses it. Gets reverses, but Rob. Bobby Roode reaches the ropes, does a spine buster, kicks out of it. Um, Drew does the Glasgow kiss, gets a one count. Does the the Claymore, gets a two count, ducks the Claymore, basically grabs him, does the glorious DDT, gets a one two, gets does tries to do it again. He reverses it. Drew reverses it, does the future shot, gets a two count, kicks out of that. And then the final time I think um Bobby like Bobby was trying to dodge the Claymore. Drew comes up, hits him with the claymore, gets a one, two, three, retains the belt. So pretty much what we got, and then the final part, like one as um Drew is celebrating in the ring, as he's celebrating in the ring going backstage, you see a guy in a in a janitor suit. We don't know who he is, but he's going to the legends legends um locker room. Goes in there, think it's takes off the glove. You see hands, so you basically see hands, but you also see like a bit of hair. So it looks like a like a really Weird hairstyle, but it turns out to be Randy Orton. So Randy Orton has night like takes off the mask. I think he, like I said, I think he was playing some Hitman back in the day and doing some disguise thing. And he takes off the mask, puts on the night vision goggles, turns off the light, and all you hear is him hitting him, hitting everybody against. You hear um, uh, Rick screaming, Big Show screaming, Christian screaming, and um, and Shawn Michaels is knocked out. They turn back on the lights. And you see Randy Orton leaving. The they're getting the officials, getting the officials, the um the the emergency personnel, and they get in there. He leaves. He's just doing his disguise and he walks on, and then the the show is over. And I gotta say, guys, like raw, I'm gonna give it. A, I'm gonna give it like a. I'm gonna give it like a C minus on this one, because it was the all the matches were good. There was like a lot of rematches. I just don't really think, like I don't know what they're doing in a not like in a mindset. What I mean, guys, is this. I don't really know what they're doing because here's my thing. I like that Bobby Roode's back. I like that Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke are a team. I just don't really know what they're doing. I'm glad that Asuka's really defending the belt, but I don't really think who she's really going to challenge because Zelina's beating her. I mean, she's beating Zelina. She's beating everyone. I feel like if she's going to take on anybody, they need to, there has to be somebody from NXT. And I feel like Rhea's going to be that person or Io's going to be that person at some point. Because I think I take over, take over thirty one, which is this Sunday. If Candice wins and she drops the belt to Candice, there's a reason I think they're gonna make her drop it because I think they're gonna let her go to the main roster and challenge Oscar because I feel like they're gonna do that or let Rhea do it because Rhea is gonna end up leaving or she might get drafted to Raw during the draft uh, the fourteenth, which I'm thinking. But I'll talk to you guys about my uh, speculations about that later. Um, pretty much like I said, it was great. I just, like I said, um, I don't really expect that much from Bobby Roode. Uh, Dolph Ziggler, I like seeing him. I just don't know if they're doing anything with him or there's anything left to do with them. Um, I did like the 24... I didn't even get to talk about the 24-7 championship thing because it was cool. It was kind of funny because they, they thought that um, Akira Tozawa died and then basically the ninja turns out to be who gives him the black belt. Turns out to be um, Drew Gulak hits him with the briefcase, gets the 24-7 championship. Then Akira Tozawa goes under him. First, Akira Tozawa gets the pin. And Drew Gulak gets the pin off of the off the briefcase, and then our truth hits Drew Gulak and um Tizawa, so they do a triple threat match. Basically, uh, Drew Gulak is basically doing the Gulak on our truth, and Tizawa Tizawa does his um his four fifty splash, gets a two count, 
then our troop does a double. He does a um basically does a double AA courtesy of John Cena, and he wins and he retains the belt, but he runs. So pretty much, like I said, I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a C minus because like I said, Raw was good, but it wasn't that good. I just think that they really don't know what they're doing. Um, I don't know how it's gonna go going forward because, like I said, there's a lot of stuff they're trying to do, a lot of stuff they redid, and they've been redoing a lot. And I just think it's just too comical, or they're just literally trying to make everybody just like there's not enough people in that roster. I just think the roster is just just, just abysmal. For the women's like for the women's tag division, it's just abysmal because like I don't really think the I think it's gonna be between the Riot Squad and and Lana and Natalia. I just think that's the only reason they're doing it. To make her stay current. I just don't see it, bro. I mean, I could see Alexa Bliss coming back and changing it a little bit. Because I would want that to happen. Or Nikki Cross going and changing. Or Nikki Cross staying on SmackDown. Alexa Bliss going to Raw. Because I think that will end up happening and change it. Because I think she would be better on Raw. Because I want to see this new version of Alexa Bliss kind of take on Asuka in a little bit. Like the craziness. But anyway, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.